Hello and welcome to John Knox Village of Central Florida. My name is Connie Lloyd. I'm the Director of Sales and Marketing and I have had the privilege and honor of working with this community for over 23 years. Today is an exciting day for us. Normally we have this event in our wonderful auditorium with residents acting as experts to explain to you what it's like to live at John Knox Village. Well, as you know, with the pandemic, we can't do that. So we're gonna do the next best thing and we're gonna introduce you to a handful of our residents who have lived here at John Knox Village for quite some time and they're going to tell you about their life at John Knox Village. I'll be back a little later um, to wrap it all up, but in the meantime, sit back and enjoy the show. My name, I'm Tom Sandoff. This is my wife, Karen. We have lived here in John Knox Village of Central Florida since April of 2017. So we're in our, in, heading into our fourth year. And we moved over from the Tampa Bay area about two and a half hours and we learned about it through a very happy couple that lived here for almost five years. Hello, I'm Phyllis Dale. I live here at John Knox Village. Uh, I originally lived in Winter Springs, Florida before I sold my home and uh, so here I am a happy camper. Uh, we're Mr. and Mrs. Maureen and Bob Dunham. Uh, we lived in New Smyrna for a few years but we're basically from State College, Pennsylvania. And uh, we enjoy the, the closeness of New Smyrna and sometimes can even go back and forth to the beach. Hi folks, my name is Dave Joy. I came to uh, this fine place about eight years ago from Palm Coast. My wife, unfortunately, was bedridden at the time and finding a good nursing home, especially one like the one here that has a five-star rating, was very, very high on my list. We moved here and I haven't regretted one day. Hi, I'm Bill Mahar. I moved to John Knox from Howie in the Hills, a little town that's south of Leesburg. I've been here almost four years now. Well, I think that I feel very safe here. I feel that uh, the management has considered all the options and actually has taken wonderful steps to help us choose how we want to live here. Um, we're really very secluded at this point and I feel very safe. If there's no other place in Florida I would rather live, um, I feel like even though we can't see family, we can still do FaceTime, we can still talk on the phone. And to me, this is better than where I came from because I have no idea what it's like where they are. And it's so many cases right now that this has just given us a real piece of insecurity. Well, the safety issue here is uh, pretty remarkable. Uh, my new uh, favorite song from the past is, I'm just a prisoner of love. <laughs> but we feel like that we've been taken captive in a very good way. Um, <clears throat> all of the services that are available to us, the fact that we can even uh, enjoy our, our meals um, at home, <clears throat> but prepared, safely delivered, is just a great feature. And then, you know, the daily checks that we receive here. We wouldn't be getting phone calls at home, except maybe from our kids, but we get this bolo messages each day that want to know, do you have a fever? Are there any symptoms? So I cannot imagine how anyone could be living in a place that's more secure and safeguarded than John Knox Village of Central Florida. We, we're really blessed. I, I can't believe anyone would wait. Uh, in a normal time, this place is very good. We really enjoy it, but when you have a pandemic or a hurricane, my God, there is no better place to be. And if I were sitting out there now wondering, what should I do it during a pandemic? I would say, 
get here as quickly as you can and hope that you can get in. If I, if I would have still been living at home during uh, COVID-19, and I've often thought about this, I honestly don't know what I would do. I, um, I can't tell you what they have done. What they, every week, they let us know. We have a, we have a uh, television station here in John Knox. And our, uh, our CEO comes on every week and lets us know, is there any change in plans? What's going on in Orange City? How the numbers are? What we need to do tells us what to do. We wear our masks in, in our public areas. There is just, they're taking care of us folks. If I would have been home, who was taking care of me? I decided that I only take my car out a couple of days a month. I didn't need a car. I've got my golf cart, which sure isn't expensive like a car. And I could take that. We have we have everything here, <laughs> folks. We have everything here. We got a we got a uh, an ice cream a uh, uh, little gathering place with the best ice cream in the world, and you could go. It's called the Scoop, and they've made it into a general store. They got everything you need. And if there isn't something you uh, don't see there, let them know. They'll have it there as fast as possible. So everything is here, folks. And they've kept us safe. There is not one thing that we regret. It has been perfect. It is the first time, actually, the pandemic brought this. This is the first time I have really felt retired because we were always involved in things. And, I, and I'm looking forward to getting back to it. But I'm now <clears throat> reading books, knitting, writing letters, all kinds of things that I had to think, oh, I better do this pretty soon. So there are some pluses even to this restful period. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. I think our timing was right. Uh, we came in here when we were active. And we're still active, uh, which is what you need to do. You can't wait till you're infirm. Uh, that's no fun. That's this is this is a fun place to be. Yes, you don't want to wait till you need it, because we've met so many wonderful people. So many really fine people here and the staff is excellent from top to bottom. We, we didn't know a soul when we came here. We knew nobody and that that can be a scary thing uh, but as soon as we got here this community sucked us up so quickly and and just made us feel a part of the fabric of this place. I have a place, we have a portal on our tele, on, uh, in our computers, or you could just make a call. And they give you an option of foods you can get, and I just drive my golf cart over to, the, uh, to where our activity center is, and the, the wonderful servers come out, bring it to me in a bag, they got masks on, they got gloves on, and they bring it to me, and then I just go on home and, and uh, have my wonderful uh, uh, sandwich, or, or, or a big salad, or a wonderful entree, or there's even, there is even uh, for vegetarians. They even have gluten free. Uh, here, here, I've got my golf cart, and I don't have to worry about going out in the traffic. Well, before we moved here, um, we were pretty active and uh, really enjoyed walking outside and um, enjoyed the benefits of just good health. And when we moved in, we really were able to do almost all of those things as free people, whatever we wanted. Um, one of the things that I got involved in when we first moved in here is um, actually being part of the music, which I did, the choir and practiced once a week and performed once a week in our wonderful Vesper service. And then the other thing I like to do is, the thing about John Knox that's really special is people volunteer for so many things here that it really makes 
makes you happy because you're not just concentrating on yourself. There's many people here that need assistance, um, people that enjoy music, which I like to provide for um, people in the memory unit. And that's one of the things that I'm looking forward to getting back to as soon as this clears up. <laughs> yeah, i am uh, been known to be pretty gregarious. And uh, <clears throat> where I came from, I was a, a part-time chaplain at a hospital. So interacting with people was very important to me. And John Knox Village was just the, the, the perfect setting to do that. <clears throat> and as my wife mentioned, that the volunteerism, oh. uh, such an important ingredient in this community, um, in many, many ways. And uh, one of the things, of course, that isolation has <clears throat> prohibited, prohibited for us is getting to assisted living and, and um, Majestic Oaks, which is our skilled nursing facility here, where we would uh, visit with patients. My dog, Jake, just loved to go and lick people. <laughs> uh, and so that part of it, is, of course, has, has sort of been suspended. But we're looking forward to getting back at it prudently because, again, it's the wisdom of those that administer this place that has kept it so secure and free of the virus. Since the COVID, uh, well, you know, I, I was a musician before I was here 50 years in show business and I never knew that uh, I was gonna be able to continue my music here. And I can't believe what's happened. In fact, I had sold all my equipment and, and everything <laughs> before I came here thinking, I wouldn't be playing any music here. Well, that didn't happen. I was here in the following week, I was already having a show in the lounge. You know, um, one thing that happened to me is that um, Ken Benke, who is um, head of our operations here, called me one day. This was back in April. And he asked me if I would like to do a TV show. To, do a perfor to perform on our TV station. Well, I didn't have to think about it because uh, I knew that would be the thing for me to, to give music to, the, to our residents that uh, uh, can't get out to the lounge and we don't have that anymore. Not for now, I mean. And um, so that gave me that gave me an outlet to still use my music because what a joy it is to give music to, uh, to our residents. Now, what I miss, um, I, guess, I guess I miss most of all the chorus that I started back in, uh, uh, it was a year ago this last June, the Sunshine Singers, which we have about 80 or more now. And we sang every Saturday. And the residents who were part of the chorus, they'd come and they looked forward to that. Even if they did sing, some mouthed the words, some hummed. It didn't matter. It was the fact that they were all together and we were singing those great old songs for 45 minutes to an hour every Saturday, the Sunshine Singers. I guess I miss that most of all, and I know they do too because I keep getting emails and some cards, like when I had my birthday cards that they were singing there. Oh, Phyllis, we miss the Sunshine Singers, and I know they do, because that was a great outlet for them, and music's good for your soul, folks. It's a healer, it cheers you up, and uh, I look forward to coming back to that. Would you like to hear me uh, sing and perform? I'll tell you how you can do that. These performances, you can see them all. And while you're watching this, you're going to hear me talk a lot about living here. Because I talk to the residents and you can sit back there and be listening to my show and feel like you're already living here. So um, just go to YouTube. Just go to YouTube and put in Phyllis Dale. And also, if you go to the John Knox, um, John Knox uh, uh, of, of um, Central Florida, they have a website. You go on there and you can really see a, a lot about our community 
And also, every week, my show's put on there. So you could just click on there. Yeah. This is a great place to live. Well, we've enjoyed being very busy in ever, whatever community that we were participating in. And so coming to John Knox, it was very exciting to see all the activities that were available, all the programs that were uh, offered to us, the fine dining, the whole thing was a real treat. Uh, some of that, of course, has changed with the epidemic. <clears throat> and I miss uh, the community service I was doing in Orange City Elementary School because obviously they're not in session right now. But it was a wonderful experience. Uh, I had taught for years in the elementary level and it was really exciting to go back again and they need help. So once this is over and we can return to that, um, that would be great. But I've also been doing um, uh, helping in the gift shop. But of course that closed. So the gift shop is not open, but when it does reopen, uh, I plan to be back there. It's, it's fun. You meet a lot of people. I work with a gal that is really fun and new to the uh, community, and it's been a very, very good experience. And uh, I participate in the knitting group, which knits um, lap robes for the Majestic Oaks um, uh, uh, unit that is here. So I can still continue knitting. That hasn't changed, but it has changed because the group is not together now. This year's been a very unusual year. Uh, as president of the Residents Council, uh, we got whopped in March. Uh, we normally meet once a month. Our committees meet once a month. We have breakfast for the new residents uh, every other month. And so we're quite busy. Now we get hit with a pandemic. What do we do? So we're, we're being creative. It's brought out a lot of the creative juices and we are doing now the resident council meeting by Zoom. And that really works. So I, I'm still as busy, I'm doing it differently. In fact, uh, the normal breakfast we had for new residents coming in, we can't do that now. The room isn't available, the dining isn't suitable for that. So what we're thinking about doing very soon and maybe for the rest of the year is to have a wine and cheese for the new residents coming in where we can talk about this place and get them an orientation and tell them how to how to cope in this environment so it's been it's been yeah it's been different but i haven't seen it slow down much <clears throat> well one of the one of my favorite things to do is photography and I've been lucky enough to be asked to be a resident photographer and do a lot of the pictures for Village Life. So if you get a copy of Village Life, take a peek inside the cover. You'll see my name and you may see some of my photographs, often appearing on the back cover of the magazine. I think there's several things that I like about John Knox here that uh, really didn't have where I lived before. And I think that's the camaraderie of a very nice group of people. It doesn't take you long to get involved with things. As a matter of fact, it's just a little bit of advice I might give you is, don't volunteer for everything at once. Take your time because there's so many great things you can do here. Some clubs, uh, gatherings, uh, people. Uh, I myself am a, a model ship builder. And I, that was left over from my days when I was just a youngster. And uh, I restarted it uh, when I retired. And uh, now I'm Mr. Ship Builder around here. But anyway, you got golf courses, you've got uh, anything you can name, including bicycling, walking, uh, bird watching. Uh, we even have a pool here that makes life a nice, nice too. I, I'm sort of a nerd. I, uh, I like doing things on the computer and I volunteered to uh, be a resource particularly for uh, Apple products, but I also get involved with PCs. And so I get 
calls fairly frequently of, I've got this sort of problem. I never anticipated the types of problems I would encounter, but uh, uh, they've been very challenging and I love doing it. In fact, uh, I was helping one lady uh, whose husband had passed away and uh, she had no idea what his passwords or anything else were. And so we worked for over a half day and she was very apologetic about taking my time and I said, I would rather do this than almost anything else I can think of. So uh, it's not an imposition, I love doing it. Um, I, I also walk a lot. Uh, uh, I have to, I have to keep track of the construction that's going on now. I do my usual uh, uh, daily sidewalk superintending, and uh, I've been involved with the uh, village friends. I was a secretary for two years, and now on the residence council. And uh, uh, I, I've tried. Uh, since I'm the chair of the finance committee, to um, cover some topics during the quarterly meetings that people might not be familiar with. And uh, uh, I had uh, <laughs> a friend uh, say to me after one of the meetings, well, that was sort of interesting, that jibber-jabber you did. <laughs> <laughs> but the lady that said it, I take that as high compliments. So. <laughs>
And I've asked them how they feel, and they said that they, they know they're being taken care of. You, you should tell them about Martha and your experience. Well, um, recently it was necessary to have a biopsy. Uh, they, the one that, oh, I'm sorry, what's it called? The basal cell, I'm sorry. The basal cell biopsy, which in itself is not very serious. But they decided that it needed to be done. So I, I um, went to Martha, and, she, and Martha is the nurse practitioner, and she agreed that I needed to see somebody. So I, I did. I found a, a doctor outside who did the um, surgery. However, Martha has been the one that I see every single week, and sometimes a phone call where she has another suggestion, because it turned into be more of a surgery than either one of us anticipated. So she sees me weekly. <clears throat> I just go over there. Within three minutes, I'm in the office. She's on time. She is very, very good. And the thing that I really like, too, is that she, ta she takes her time, but she also has an in with the doctors here and knows who to go to and how to get us in. So there's not a long waiting period. She's been wonderful, and she's helped neighbors of ours. She's helped you mm -hmm. uh, at one time, and, and she's so responsible and so responsive and so warm. Actually, on this, I think she did a better job than the doctor. She, she did. Uh, and it's so, not, nice, not, not so nice just to be able to get out into Oak Park, uh, which is a golf cart ride normally, and, and see her and get in. I mean, it's, it's, it is no worry now that we have to always depend on somebody outside the village for these things and wait for a month or so to try to get in. You can go down and call Martha's office and get in tomorrow if you need to. Well, I myself have been fortunate uh, as far as health goes. <laughs> um, so I haven't had that much experience with the people in the medical profession here. But, as I said before, one of the main reasons I did move here was for my wife. And she spends all her time in the Majestic Oaks nursing facility here. And, and I cannot say enough about the place. The people especially, the cleanliness, the camaraderie, just being nice. I made it a habit of getting over to see my wife at least once a day, and usually at lunchtime, just to make sure the food was as good as it's supposed to be. Believe me, it is, and she did not lose any weight when she was here. As far as being taken care of, she was bedridden here for Oh, well over two years and not one bed sore in that whole time. I think that speaks volumes for the help that you have. Um, I think that moving here was part of what my mom and dad uh, encouraged us to do. They are both still alive and they're in a CCR like this, CCRC, um, up in Pennsylvania. And when we thought about moving, we thought we would go where they are. And we thought, no, we really like Florida. So my dad always told me, he said, you know, I feel so bad. He worked as one of the administrators. And he said, they wait, people wait so long to come in. And they don't, they come in and then they get sick and they haven't really had time to make friends, to make a new lifestyle. And so we feel, so blessed to have done it early because now we can do things here and make new friends and really enjoy this life that's ahead of us. I've forgotten whose marketing term it was. Maybe it was Nike, but I would say just do it. Don't delay. Uh, just to reinforce what Karen said, um, so many people just, you know, well, we're comfortable where we are and it, sometimes it seems so foreboding to have to deal with those things, but uh, the services here just in the transition, the, the, the things that are afforded to you to help you downsize and determine, you know, what you're able to do, 
it's, it's al al it was almost seamless for us, mm -hmm. honestly. And I'm so glad that we did it while we're healthy because you can maintain independence. We're still able to travel and see our grandkids uh, at, when the COVID <laughs> times are over. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> just, it, it's just a decision that should be made sooner. Karen's parents did reinforce for us that, um, you know, it's the, probably one of the best things you can do for children. We have four children. Um, just to, for them to know we're secure here. They, they're not, never going to have to come in and rescue us. They're, everything is in place. So I would just say, by all means, if you're considering it, I can't imagine a better place than John Knox Village in Central Florida. Th this place is so sound financially. It's such a friendly place. And there, uh, I serve on the Spiritual Life Council. There's a spiritual dimension here that's available to people across denom denominations, whether you're Jewish, uh, Protestant, or Catholic. Uh, there's a place here for you. So um, that's, that's my final thought. We, uh, we started up north. We were with Penn State for a long time, and Penn State was initiating a CCRC. Uh, they weren't quite sure what what it was or how to do it, and, but we were involved with the early stages of that. And so we got very much informed about what is a CCRC and why do it. And so the term was not unfamiliar with us. And Maureen and I are maybe a little different from some couples. We like to plan where we're going. We don't want to wait till we get sick or infirmed and have our kids pick out a nursing home for us. We decide where the next phase of life is going to be. So this was a very deliberate plan of ours to look for a CCRC. And once we got to New Smyrna Beach, we decided we aren't going to shovel snow anymore, so we're going to look around here. And that's when John Knox Village uh, came into our, our vision. And we looked at an awful lot of them, but this by far was the best one we could have picked. But John Knox Village came into our vision because one Sunday morning we're reading the paper and I continue to see these very nice ads, quarter page ads of John Knox Village. And after the third week of this, I said to Bob, I think we should look at John Knox Village and think about Penn State someplace else. Yeah. So we did. We came over <clears throat> the next week in marketing introduced us to John Knox Village, and we even brought another couple with <clears throat> us because that couple said, well, we haven't even thought about this yet. Uh, so they came, and we both bought, and we're now neighbors. But, but, but the point I think we should make here is it's so easy to say we're not ready for this yet, or we don't want to look at that, or that's for other people, but not for us. We want to stay at our good old home. We've been in here for 50 years, and we hate to leave the homestead. Well, you, you better take a look at this sort of thing. You got to make a decision, and you got to plan it. Otherwise, your kids will do it. And I, I, I don't want my kids telling me where I should end up my life. Folks, uh, moving, in, moving away from your home it is, is a traumatic experience. There's no getting around it. The only thing I can suggest is do your homework. Look at all the places that you can. Kind of come along with a must-have type list that you want. And I think when you get to John Knox Village and look around and taste the food and see the people and the facility and how pristine it is around here, how well taken care of it is, and how everybody waves at everybody when you walk around. I think that speaks volumes. And I think that is the reason that I moved here. And I must say I am entirely satisfied. We actually started our search over 10 years ago. We realized not having children, not having relatives anywhere close, that we were looking for a place to take care of us in our old age. We looked at a place, a, a fabulous place in Chicago. Um, it was a high rise, brand new, 
beautiful place in the heart of the uh, Magnificent Mile. Uh, I, it, it wasn't a serious thing. We were there on vacation. We saw an ad, and so we thought, well, we'll see if uh, they'll show us around, which they did. I believe it was about a year later, there was several articles in the news about them going bankrupt. Now, it has subsequently been purchased by somebody and it is in operation and it is a very nice place, but it brought home the fact that while you think something looks really nice and they offer a lot of nice things, that you need to be cognizant of the finances. John Knox Village is debt-free, and that is extraordinarily unique. I believe um, in Mr. Trainer's comparison, there might be one other in Florida that is debt-free, but it is extraordinarily unique. And the board of directors here uh, is very in on keeping it debt-free and that's something that's very important when we move in uh, to a place like this we're here for the rest of our life that may be 10 20 or more years there are people that have moved in that are now over a hundred here um, so it's, it's a long-term sort of consideration and you want to make sure that management, the board, um, has the wherewithal to take care of us for that long. As far as trying to downsize, I had done some of that myself before we realized it, there was going to be some help. So there were boxes, but they came to where we came from, Tampa area, and they basically packed everything. And the amazing part was we moved over and it's all back in our new place, and I never had to do a thing. It was, it was just incredible. It was very smooth. Um, we had no issues. Nothing was broken. Everything was just amazing so we had actually had no cost we didn't have to pay a thing because we were in the range of the mileage so it just made it so much more sense so some people say if it sounds too good to be true it probably isn't <laughs> but this was true <laughs> I was just 80 years old two days ago and I was a happy I was happy we had our residents come around and put cards on your mailbox and calling you and show how much they care I wasn't alone here on my 80th birthday I was alone in my house because I am a widow I was alone in my house but what a great birthday because we have the greatest residents here. I mean, they, we have so much love, so much caring, so much sharing. Folks, I just can't say enough. I, I think we've had, a, we've had a great life as a couple. But in my thinking, and I don't know whether it was your thinking or not, but in my thinking and in our planning, we decided we wanted to locate in this phase of our life at a place that if something happened to one of us, we still would be surrounded by friends and not be all by ourselves in a corner in some community. So that was a part of our thinking at that point. And luckily we still are together and I hope for a long time yet, but uh, yeah, and you need to think about that because not everybody lives forever, I've discovered. And, and this is a great place to come, whether you're single or a couple. Uh, well, I have, from New Smyrna, there were several people that did come over here. And most of them are now single, single women. I don't think there's any single men. No. 
single women, and they, they I, it's interesting to watch them because they do form a group, they have dinner together, they celebrate birthdays or whatever together, uh, and they play um, cribbage or marjan or bridge or whatever. And so, and the men, there's a lot of men that play, uh, you know, poker, not poker, poker. yeah, there's poker play, but there are a lot of things for the single people to do. Um, that I really hadn't thought that much about, but they are very busy, and they can. There's a lot of opportunity for single people to to mix. Well, you so cannot we make a mistake by coming to John Knox Village. I cannot understand anybody who would feel that this was not just wonderful. And we've had a a very fine life in in Pennsylvania. We loved it, and never ever dreamed that it would be this wonderful. But it has been, and we are glad we didn't go to the original site that we had thought about. Plus, we don't have snow. <laughs> That's right. Well, let, let, me, close. Let, let me say uh, just a little bit about our community. People ask, what, what's the community like here? Uh, and it's hard to describe. I, I've thought about it a lot. But the people here have all worked hard in their lives. They've come out of great careers. They've been all over the world, and they somehow end up here at John Knox, and they don't have to flout their careers. They don't have to tell who they were because now it's important who you are. And as a community, it brings out the best of us at this time of our life in terms of how do you mold into a community, and how do you think of things greater than yourself? and giving to others and giving into the community. And you can't be here very long before you get that feeling as a real legitimate part of a community. When, when we moved here, my wife passed away shortly uh, after we moved. And um, the friends from my old community would ask, well, do you intend to stay? And my response was very consistent. Where would I be better off than where I am right now? I don't have to cook. I, while I do clean, I wouldn't have to. We have uh, every other week housekeeping. I am not alone in my loss. Uh, there are so many other people that have lost spouses that um, I would have been I would have been unique in my old community and uh, I'm not unique at all here and I love where I live um, the Holly unit is ideal for me Um, last year, John Knox employed an actuary to do a um, future service obligation report. And what that does is that actuary looks at the finances of the organization and it's sort of a snapshot. It's will they be able to take care of the folks that live here now with the circumstances that are in, in existence now in the future. And it's one of those odd things where a negative number is actually a good thing. And it was a negative 30 plus million dollars. Uh, so that, uh, that again tells us that the finance, financial wherewithal of John Knox is very, very good. I was the first resident in the Hollies, the latest new construction. 
currently they're building the Valencia landing and it uh, will be, I forget the exact number, uh, but another new addition. Some folks have been concerned about John Knox getting too large. I am not concerned at all about that. This is a tremendous community. Uh, you meet lots of great people, and uh, I think most of us look forward to meeting even more great people, and a new clubhouse, and a new restaurant, and a new swimming pool. So uh, a lot of things to look forward to with the new construction. Thank you for joining us. I hope you enjoyed as much as I did listening to our residents and their experience in living in John Knox Village. I'd like to tell you just a little bit about the landscape and the campus itself at John Knox Village. We sit on almost 200 beautiful acres of land. We have a lake, we have a pond, we have walking trails, we have a dog park. We have so much here for you all to come see and enjoy. And speaking of coming and enjoying, please feel free to use the phone number at the end of this uh, recording to give us a call and schedule a time to come out and we very, very safely can show you our community and answer any other questions you may have. Stay well, be safe, and God bless. See you soon.